worked in an organization, Red Dot Foundation. We want to increase awareness about sustainable, inclusive urbanism through this um, initiative during the Calagora Festival. Uh, the initiative is both a photo exhibition, it's a panel discussion later this week, and it's a heritage walk. So in many ways we want to raise awareness and discuss how uh, cities and urban uh, settlements can become more conducive and inclusive. We do, uh, it's a topic that's not only close to my heart and to Sweden, but it's also part of the global goals of sustainable development that the United Nations uh, has uh, all agreed, all nations have agreed to uh, commit to pursuing these goals, including of course both India and Sweden. And what we see here today is one of those partnerships to try to attain those goals. Uh, at this photo exhibition that we're looking at today, we're looking at two types of inequalities in urban settings. We're looking at the socio-economic inequalities. These are very much um, represented by the Mumbai version of the photographer Johnny Miller's globally renowned uh, Unequal Scenes project. Uh, you can look at the pictures here and see the very stark contrast between slum settlements and the more rich and uh, affluent uh, urban uh, sections just being next, uh, next uh, to each other. It's a very, very clear picture of the in stark inequalities that we can find in urban settings. Now, I do want to say around this issue, there is a lot of progress that's been made. The United Nations and the global community has been able through between 1990 and 2016 uh, the proportion of global urban population living in slums fell from 46 to 23 percent. So there is a lot that can be done and there is this encouraging. However, we still have one billion people living in slums and this is a major urgent task to engage with. Two of the UN development goals are very committed to this particularly. It's the global uh, goal number 10 about reducing inequalities and it's the global goal number 11 which is about um, uh, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. By Just to mention a couple of the targets. So one target is by 2030 to ensure access for all to adequate, safe and affordable housing and basic services and upgrade slums. Uh, and by 2030 provide universal access to safe, inclusive and accessible green public spaces, particularly for women and children, older persons and persons with disabilities. This is one part of the inequality we're looking at. The other part of inequality in cities we're looking at is inequalities of accessibility due to disabilities. Uh, very much uh, affecting, I think, our friends here today. Who's very proud to see us join us. Um, and this one, we have the photo exhibition, uh, Accessibility, that feature portraits by photographer Sunil Takar and Marcus Marchetti. Here we meet personal stories of uh, Indians and Swedes living with disabilities, describing dreams, sorrows, joys, and also how they found solutions to cope with challenges and to live normal lives and overcome and accessible. They're heroic stories, and I know as a parent, it also involves enormous uh, struggles and um, challenges and uh, engagement of the parents to support the of these children. So these are something that we want to both uh, present and hopefully engage in a discussion about. If we go back to the sustainable development goals, there are... I just wish we have it quick left. And the final wish we find the wish. And the cost of it goes to the switch. And so it goes to the switch that last it. And the switch we have it goes to the switch that last it. It's quite good to be a speed decision. It's a bit of the new use of land. It's a good American. It's a bit of the South Africa. It's a bit of the Antarctica. It's a bit of Canada. It's because we share the celebration and the Gora Festival. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, uh, well, I won't be very long. I just want to say that there are a number of goals to support persons with disabilities. There are seven direct goals in the sustainable development goals, there are seven indirect goals all there to make uh, access for persons with disabilities easier so they can contribute to society and live normal lives and uh, live in all about this is for helping people to live in dignity in various ways 
I'm very happy that Sweden is a partner to this with our very key uh, partner organization here in India. And uh, we hope that we can create a conversation, a discussion to how we all can contribute uh, to attain the goals that we've all set and committed to so that uh, people will live with dignity and uh, urban landscapes will be more accessible. Thank you very much. And now Elsa. Elsa Marie De Silva and I'm the founder and CEO of Red Dot Foundation. I'm really thrilled to partner with the Consulate General of Sweden in Mumbai. Thank you, Anna. Um, this exhibition is really uh, important because it's about accessibility. It's about inclusive urbanism. And we don't really think about these things. Think about it. I'm a resident of Mumbai forever. And it's a city that is fascinating, but it's also a city which is a mega city of 20 plus million population. We have our challenges. And by 2050, the year 2050, it's slated that 70% of all the world's population will be in urban centers. What that means for us is it's only going to get more crowded and it will put a strain on our resources. So through this exhibition, we want to first highlight the inequality that exists. And so when we develop our plans or we uh, make our policies, when we create new uh, infrastructure, are we leaving people behind? And second is to really think about people who are different from us and how do they navigate through this city that we love and cherish. But do we have the infrastructure for them to live an independent and a high quality life, which we all hope for? So whilst we have tried to showcase some of our uh, fellow citizens with different abilities and how they have positive stories for themselves, but we can do something at our own end to make their lives much better. So let us be more mindful, thoughtful when creating policies and let's demand that we, that our city includes all and not leaves anyone behind. Thank you. Do you want to say something? Sure. Yes. Ma'am, we can do the sound bite here. Okay. Once okay. Let's go. The Bombay, the the the, the Bombay is nice, but uh, the the uh, what traffic is worse in in uh, the traffic is in uh, stuck in in the in the Bombay and it's cut also monsoon. It uh, cuts the tree out and the monsoon how the monsoon is there the, that the uh, mom, that the monsoon is cut the is cut the is cut the tree all in the all in the all in the bombay and uh, the the bombay is very difficult to 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 uh, to drive the car and bike and all the bus all the all the the, the, the train and the worst in Bombay is what is very difficult to drive the bike also in the Bombay also in all the all the all the environment also in Bombay and the uh, uh, Bombay is very difficult to drive the car. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm Nicole's mother, Zarina, and uh, since she was uh, since she was three and a half years old, uh, we came to know that she had autism. For the first time, we heard the name, and uh, it was very difficult to accept at first. But slowly, slowly, then acceptance came, and with acceptance, we started venues to create a normal life for her, near normal life. She went to a special school for 15 years where she learned and they found out what her abilities are. She's good in dancing, singing, she's got a full artistic trait. And computer she learned on her own. Slowly, slowly she progressed into doing paintings, artwork and did a graduation course through the school only in uh, artwork. And even now she is working in an NGO, Om Creations Trust, where she is doing a lot of artwork and her artwork is used for putting on bags, for trays, for coasters. She is very good in caricature artwork and uh, she amazes everyone with her beautiful ability to sing and dance and you know, she is a very happy-go-lucky girl and she lives a near normal life. And uh, inclusion is very important in today's world. Awareness will create it. 
especially with school children will know about this then they will be the future generations who will be more progressive in acceptance which is very important for these children mm -hmm. thank you from a personal level, I would like to put it that it's very, the acceptance level has to come because we say that, but it's very difficult in our day-to-day -day life of living with people with differently abled because the acceptance is not there and it's very difficult, you know. So the acceptance has to be there and people have to be open and accept these people as a part of a society. Because that is not there. It's easy said than done. But even then, there's a lot of stigma in society. And I think even the infrastructure in this, uh, in a, in a city like Mumbai, has to improve. You know, for uh, these children. That's it. Thank you.